he is our um, uh, seasoned residency counselor, and he's going to speak in a little bit. And then we have Steve Havis. And, and Steve, if you raise your hand too and wave, he is our newest um, team member, and he is also a residency counselor. Also on, on the call is Susan Leathers. Susan Leathers is our PR partner. She's the one who gets all the news out in the public and helps uh, coordinate the social media platform that we have. So thank you so much team members for being a part of the heritage and helping us uh, get that information out to those who, who need to know. Uh, thank you again for taking time out of your day to join us for this <coughs> virtual event. Uh, things are a little different this year with the COVID um, situation and uh, we're all learning. Uh, we're all learning how to do things differently. We're all um, having crash courses in technology and, and learning how to communicate um, from a technological standpoint. So uh, we look forward to sharing information with you today about the heritage. Uh, we are going to go over a little bit of um, uh, housekeeping first and, and share with you details about the heritage, uh, the company, the community, as well as details about the plan that you would have here at the heritage. Uh, today we're going to go over who LCS is. We're also going to talk about um, the benefits of life care and what life care is. We're also going to talk about the different types of senior living communities. Um, also, a little bit about the lifestyle and, and uh, that this lifestyle is the best way when you are a senior. We're going to do a short cross comparison. And then we're going to take an actual video tour of the Davidson 2 the Franklin Two and the Jackson Two. Those three apartments are um, the three apartments that are identified in the incentive that we sent out about a month ago. And um, there's some steep discounts on these three particular apartments. So we'll showcase those as well. We'll have an opportunity for your questions at the end, but please use that chat feature if you do have a, a, a question during the time that we are talking. Um, we will be looking at that and, and addressing any questions that we can in a timely manner. Um, when we're done with today's presentation, there will be a small, a small um, uh, drive-through video that's narrated by a wonderful person. And uh, so stay on after the question and answer session to see that two minute video. Um, so no further ado, I'm going to introduce Mr. Stephen Williams, and he's going to start the meeting uh, with who we are. Thank you, Judy. And again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. My name is Stephen Williams. I have been with the Heritage now for uh, seven years, and it's our privilege to talk to you and, and bring a little bit of the Heritage to your home uh, and speak to you uh, about our community um, please don't be shy about uh, using the chat box, as we said. We want this to be as interactive as possible. We're still new a little bit to this technology, so um, if you're having bugs on your end, chat with us a little bit, and we're going to get through this together. So, um, uh, But with that being said, I just want to um, share a little bit about the ownership here at the Heritage. Um, Life Care Services, or LCS, is um, our managing partner, Life Care Services, has been around since 1971. So that's about 50 years of history in the long-term care uh, business. Uh, headquartered in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, and manage about 150 communities across the country. So we have a big footprint, if you will, of communities. So I really encourage you to go to our website. Um, you, can, you can Google or go to theheritage at brentwood.com and you can really learn a little bit more about LCS that way. You can Google LCS, look at the wide <coughs> footprint. Um, because if you're in other parts of the country, you may be also looking at other communities that LCS manages. And so I think that's kind of an important step. Um, and then uh, just to kind of give you even more of a bigger picture of the heritage, a lot of people want to know how large the community is. So I thought it might be good to share with you that we have 250 apartments. So those are independent living apartments ranging in size from about 720 square feet up to about uh, almost 2,000 square feet for our apartments. And then we have 65 villas on our property. Uh, we have 48 acres. And so the villas range in size from about 1,400 square feet up to just uh, almost 2,200 square feet. 
So, um, so as you can imagine, that's a lot of um, independent living places for someone like yourself to explore when you're looking at this option. So that's where Judy, myself, and Steve really kind of dive in with you uh, to, to explore these places and to really see which one of these residences will fit best for you. Um, and then lastly, I would mention we have 75 rooms in our long-term care Summerfield Health Center. And so that really completes the puzzle, if you will, for our residents, because when you move to our community, you have to be independent. So you move into one of our apartments or our villas, uh, transitioning, if needed, down the road into long-term care. So it really kind of gives that um, ease of transition, if you will, aging in place model that our residents really love because of the peace of mind that that offers. So today is really just going to be a tip of the iceberg for that, but I, I thought it might be helpful to kind of dive a little bit into that portion of, of, of the community. Um, and then a, a secondary piece, as you see on this slide here of our ownership, uh, we have local partners. So John Cooper, uh, John Stone are two partners that we have that own 83% of the community and then the LCS group owns 17%. So we're proud of the fact that we have local partners plus a national managing partner that uh, participates with us. One other bit, I guess, before we, sorry, Valerie, uh, before we go to that next slide, we've been open since 2007, so about 14 years, um, and then we've, we've grown over time. So this is our fourth and final phase that we opened last year, 2019, completed the project. So a lot of people do ask us, you know, are we finished? And yes, that, the answer to that is yes. We have completed our entire project at this point. Our fourth phase was, was finished last year and the apartments, and, and I know many of you have joined this because you wanna see this virtual tour that we're gonna do. The three apartment types that we're gonna see are all gonna be in the Redbud building. So that will be exciting for you to see three different apartments all in the new final phase. And then this slide really, I'm talking about our principles, I think is fun because uh, these pictures are uh, two, uh, four of our residents, if you will, that live here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fun, our final phase that we built, we built this um, area where we can do s'mores and have a fire pit. So I think that really kind of makes for a cozy feel um, around the community. Um, so these are these principles that we have are really our guiding principles um, that really kind of govern how we uh, operate with our residents and with, with folks like yourself who are just exploring the community. So I think it's important for us to be very transparent in all of our dealings. And so when we, when we talk to folks like yourself who are looking, we're very upfront. We share with you our residency agreement. We share with you all of our pricing. We share with you um, all of these things that you're gonna use uh, to make the best decision for yourself. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as educators. Um, and so we like to educate you on what we have, what we offer, um, so you can make the best decision for yourself. Um, these are things, our principles that we value as an organization. Uh, very, very long, long tenured um, uh, principles that we look at. Actually, these are framed in our office. Um, so I'm choosing not to read these line for line for you, but I think uh, just the transparency and the long tenured of our ownership speaks very well to the principles that we have here. I'm going to toss it back to Judy. We're going to play a little bit of tag team on this workshop. So Judy, I'm going to let you take the next slide. So um, just to get prepared for looking um, at the videos, uh, I wanted to just go over um, some of the benefits of living here at the Heritage. We are a life care style community. When you see that word together and you see a um, trademark brand after it, that little R, that designates a particular type of community. And um, in the next screen, we're not going to go there yet, but in the next screen, I'll, I'll unpack this. But some of the main benefits of the heritage is that it's a very welcoming com uh, community. We actually have a welcoming committee. Um, actually, uh, Valerie meets with them once a month. And any resident, and, and how important it's become now with COVID, any resident who moves into the community gets a member of the welcoming committee assigned to them. And this welcoming committee um, uh, resident is, is one who helps the new uh, person navigate through the, the different amenities that are here in the community, uh, the different systems, procedures, policies, and, and such. 
and just uh, introduces them to the community in a very friendly and engaging way. Um, some of the other things that are important about the heritage is the peace of mind. And, and again, when we unpack what life care is, you can see how that does give you peace of mind. We are the only community here in Middle Tennessee that can not only take care of you for the rest of your life, but can tell you how we will take care of you for the rest of your life. When you're shopping around with other senior living communities that may not have the full complement of long-term care, you want to address and ask them, well, you know, this is great. You have all these features, but how are you gonna take care of me if I need nursing home care? Those communities that don't have nursing home care can't possibly do that. So um, one of the features of life care is that we do have the full complement of continuing care services up to and including nursing home care. So which that does result in peace of mind. We have upscale amenities here. We have a bocce ball court. We have a badminton court. We have a place you can play croquet. We have a frisbee golf area if you, if you like frisbee golf. We have a full healthy life center uh, that is staffed with a fitness manager and an assistant and um, a group exercise suite. There is just, uh, you know, uh, amazing upscale amenities. And then the buy-in, which um, we're going to impact that a little bit more in the next uh, in the next screen as well, is what allows you to be able to navigate through all of these services and have them available to you at your fingertips. We have predictable monthly fees. There is maintenance-free lifestyle. Boy, <laughs> I, I came home the other day and I looked at the back of my house. There's a tree growing in my gutter. Oh my goodness. And I said to my husband, Paul, you got to get that out of there. And he's just like, you know, raised his eyebrows. Well, we're a little too young to move to the heritage. So hopefully we'll be able to in the future and, and I won't have to worry about trees growing in my gutter. Um, Abundant activities. Again, we have um, a full calendar of events, even during COVID right now, socially distanced, safe, with masks. We are, uh, we are doing um, activities, art classes. Yesterday, we had um, a ladies tea time. We also had um, a bourbon tasting. So, you know, a variety of different book clubs. Um, um, we're not back to the lecture series yet, but the Glee Club is getting together, Bible studies. You know, there's a full complement of activities that are going on now and social events as well. So let's unpack it, uh, unpack what life care is with the next screen. Um, when you're looking at senior living communities, there are four main types of senior living communities. And I know this has a lot of information on this screen. And um, what you can do also is if you'd like this information sent to you, please um, in the chat box say, I would like this information sent to you. And we will send to you a copy of this presentation so that you can refer back to it and um, make notes. We'll send it to you via email and um, so that you can have it uh, and, and refresh yourself from this from this um, discussion. So I'm not gonna go over all the different types um, in, the, in the spirit of, of time and knowing that you wanna see those apartments, but I do wanna address the type A life care, which is what we are here at the Heritage of Brentwood. It is the um, type A uh, designates that it is the best, the best type of senior living community you will find in the United States. There's very few uh, communities that offer this type of plan. And it's a type of contract that promises uh, to give you long-term care when you need it without a significant increase in your monthly fee. So when someone transitions over to long-term care, leaving their apartment or their villa and moving into the residential area for long-term care, there is a short, a small fee called, um, a, a small fee in the life care plan, which is only $740 more a month. Now I saw a question come up. Let me see what that question is. And okay, good. So we have someone who would like that information sent to them and we will do that. So the type A life care plan um, your monthly fee 
changes annually. It will change annually. I've been doing this 25 years, haven't found a place in this country where it doesn't change annually. Your monthly fee will go up every year. What it doesn't do is it doesn't go up based on your level of care. If you transition over to assisted living, memory care, or nursing home care, you will not have a greater than $740 increase each month. And that amount covers the additional meals and the personal care items that you need when you are in long-term care. So regardless of your level of care, you will not pay based on level of care. You will not pay for um, personal care, um, um, nursing care, pri you know, uh, um, any kind of uh, care that you might pay more for in other settings. So here at the Heritage, it's just a flat fee that covers the additional meals in the medical ancillaries. It's, um, it's quite um, a huge savings. And when we get down to another screen, you'll see what that savings entails uh, with an example of a Davidson apartment. Any questions on this screen before I go on to the next? Okay, I am going to turn it over to Valerie to talk a little bit more about the lifestyle in the community and the process of moving in and how she assists. Absolutely. Uh, I've been so impressed here at the Heritage since February, March, when all of the COVID craziness started, because we as a community seamlessly transitioned into safe, uh, activities and enrichments, there wasn't really a lag period. I know that uh, children in school had a lag period. People, especially small businesses, had a, a lag there where they just were kind of out of step. And I feel like the Heritage did such a great job of stepping in the gap that COVID created and creating safe opportunities for the residents here to still uh, fraternize and to enjoy each other's company and to be physically active and mentally engaged. And it is, it sounds like a cliche, but I can honestly say there is something here for everyone, whether you enjoy one-on-one -on -one activities like working puzzles and artwork, or if you prefer a group setting, such as a fitness class or a putting contest out on the putting green. Um, there's men's and women's social hours and Bible studies and uh, book clubs. There's there's something that we can reach everyone regarding regardless of what your interest is. And so I'm really pleased to say that um, the activities are just about countless. Uh, we do a good job here of mixing things up and from month to month, week to week, what the offerings are. We have a community services life team um, that their goal and their responsibility is, is engaging with residents and, and providing these opportunities to get together as a community or do something fun on your own. And I'm always amazed at the creative events that they put on and the opportunities that they provide. As move-in coordinator, I work one-on-one -on -one with our newest residents as they are taking the step and making the transition from leaving a home that they've maybe been in for decades and starting a new life here at the Heritage and trying to make that as comfortable and seamless as possible. There's a lot of downsizing and trying to decide what do I need, what can I bring with me, where is there room to put this, I've had it for 50 years, I'd hate to part with it, is there room for it? And so my team and I are here to guide in that process and make that move as comfortable as possible. We coordinate with uh, our maintenance team if there is painting or flooring upgrades that you would like to make and changes in your new apartment. And we also work with your moving company to ensure that that process and that part of the puzzle goes smoothly and that they know exactly where they're coming. We know what size truck they have, that they can park and get into the building safely and easily and get you moved in um, as effortlessly as possible. Any questions for Valerie? 
Valerie has done an amazing job. Um, <laughs> she started right when uh, COVID broke out into the world and, and um, you know, I, I'm always saying we make lemonade out of lemons and, and what a pleasure it's been for the residents who have moved in. How many have you set, have you moved in so far this year, Valerie? 23. 23 people have moved in during COVID and boy, have ha, has she done a fantastic job with them, making it um, the smoothest transition as possible. And I can, I can say from a personal standpoint, I feel safer here at the Heritage than when I go outside of the Heritage. We are like in a, in a very um, good bubble here and uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful environment. So we're going to go on to the next uh, the next um, slide, which is talking about the cost comparison of the heritage compared to somewhere else. Maybe not the heritage. Maybe staying in your home. Maybe moving into a rental community. Um, when you move to the heritage, you get the life care plan, which is that type A, the top quality plan. Um, that senior living communities in this country can offer. And when you do that, um, when you get that, you get again, peace of mind and you get the stability of the monthly fee through the continuum of care. Entrance payments are 90% refundable, which means that the buy-in or the entrance payment you pay for a particular apartment or, or uh, apartment is 90%. If you chose to move into a villa, the entrance payment or buy-in, and those words are interchangeable, has an 80% return. A Davidson apartment um, right now in Redbud has a 10% discount on the entrance payment. There is uh, one apartment that's, I think, 609,000, you would save $60,900 on the entrance payment for that Davidson. So a Davidson two apartment has a tremendous savings before the end of the year. You would need to deposit prior to December 31st and um, you would have um, up to 90 days in which to pay the balance. The monthly fee for that Davidson, and actually the, these are the numbers for 2020, 2021, it went up a little bit and uh, we'll get you that information in a follow-up, but the monthly fee for a Davidson two apartment is $4,930. And all that we have been speaking about in this presentation so far is included in that, including a meal plan, transportation services, utilities, Wi-Fi, Comcast, um, internet, um, I'm sorry, uh, Comcast, um, uh, cable TV, uh, Wi-Fi, um, utilities, and all maintenance and upkeep, plus you have the assurance of life care. So $4,930 per month. Now say you're living in your current home, and I just put a number there of $1,500 a month. So this is a life care versus living in your home. So say you're, we're gonna look at the right side of the screen, living in your home, and your current housing expenses would be approximately $1,500 a month. That would be based on insurance, taxes, upkeep maintenance, lawn care, cleaning the gutter, maybe replacing a hot water heater, um, maybe doing some painting inside and, and upkeep. I just pulled that number based on the average um, amount it costs to maintain a house without a mortgage. So say you're paying that $1,500 a month and you find or your spouse finds need for nursing home care. If you transition and are able to find a five-star rated nursing home that has availability for a, a single uh, occupancy um, room, you would pay almost $12,000 a month for that service right now today. If you were to come, if you were fortunate enough 
to be able to get a room in Summerfield, which is our health center, and you didn't live in the Heritage, you're coming from your house, coming into Summerfield, you would be paying about $12,000 a month for that type of care. Now you still have your house, you haven't sold it yet, so you still have that recurring cost of $1,500 a month. When you add those two amounts together, you're looking a little over $13,000 a month running costs until you're able to sell the house. So now you or your loved one is in, in a nursing home, which is a, a stressful circumstance. You're in a crisis situation and now you have to get your house ready to sell. You have to get a, a realtor. You have to um, um, pay a commission for that. And you still have this running costs of a private room in a nursing home far from your house where you have to travel back and forth to your loved one, or maybe you're in, in the nursing home, depending on someone else to do this. It's, it, it, it has been my experience over the time I've been doing this that that's probably um, not the best uh, plan. So if you do decide to move to the Heritage and you have the life care plan, which you would get moving here, your monthly fee would be $4,930. You would seamlessly move, you would seamlessly move to a private room in Summerfield Health Center. It would be an additional $740 a month. And your total cost here at the Heritage is $5,670. Um, whereas if you didn't have a life care plan, it would be $13,000. $249 a month. So a life care plan can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars during a stay in a nursing home. Any questions on this? Judy, we've had one question. How does long-term care insurance fit in? So long-term care insurance is a policy between you and your insurance company. They set parameters that you have to meet for that benefit to be paid to you. You get that benefit, whether you live here or not. So yes, long-term care insurance works at the Heritage. So say you have a policy that gives you, um, say it gives you $5,000 a month. Say you have a policy that pays out $5,000 a month. Which program would you rather have? The one that costs you $56.70 a month or the one that costs you $13,249 a month? So look at your policy, see what your benefit is. If your benefit is, um, you know, thirteen thousand dollars a month, and you have a policy that pays you out a per diem rate, regardless of what your cost is, you can actually make money. But um, most policies, newer policies, don't operate like that. So yes, your long-term care insurance does work here, and if you have a lower cost basis and you add that benefit, you can either be living free, um, hopefully or uh, not have any, or, or even make a little money depending on that long-term care insurance policy. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Stephen Williams and he's gonna do the tour. He's gonna narrate the tour for you. All right, thank you, Judy. Um, before we start the tour, I'm gonna mention a few things. Um, maybe reiterating some of the things that Judy said, but um, if you're comfortable, we can do um, visits here at the Heritage. So we have a, a, a center, just if you're familiar with our community, just beyond the guard gate, there's a, a, a place called Winfield, uh, which was used to be our old day center. Um, so it's just right across from where they're building the new police headquarters in Brentwood. Um, and just, just right across the street from the rec center. Uh, we can meet there, socially distance, of course, wearing masks. Um, if you prefer to meet in person, go over material, have us cover things with you, go over floor plans with you, answer your questions. Um, so that is an option if you prefer to do that. Um, and then also um, following certain criteria, and I don't necessarily wanna say that we can start making appointments for you to come into the community. But under certain criteria, we, we can also set up a visit for you within the community 
Um, again, it has to be after hours and, and following um, COVID protocol that we have here within our community. There is an option for someone who is really interested, really wants to make this decision. They just wanna finalize maybe an apartment floor plan or maybe a location. We can bring you into the community and you can pick out your apartment. So that would kind of be kind of that last step or next to last step. Um, but just know that that is a possibility uh, to do some of those things. And so today is sort of an option for you to, to get us a, a video tour. Um, but if you are wanting to kind of take the next step, I would encourage you to come on site, meet with one of us at Winfield, and then maybe even from that, we can set up a on-site visit for you. So I uh, just wanted to kind of let you know those things. Um, so right now, what we're gonna do um, is probably what you signed up for, honestly. You wanna see uh, one of our apartments. We're gonna show three apartments. The first apartment that we're gonna look at is called a Davidson floor plan. So this Davidson is an outside corner apartment. It's a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. Um, it has 1,217 square feet. Uh, it's laid out nicely as you'll see when we start the video. This one does have hardwood floors. Um, we've set this up as a model uh, so it can kind of give you an idea with furniture in there what the floor space will look like. Um, this, this may be a little hard to view in, in some places because we're doing the best we can with the technology that we have, but hopefully this will give you a good idea. We're gonna pause it in certain places and talk about it a little bit. Uh, but if you have questions, use that chat box um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So without further ado, we're, we're kind of walking through this, if you see on the screen, in this two bedroom, two bath apartment. This is available too. Yes, this apartment's available. So this oh, is- Oh wait, no, this one isn't. This one's sold. <laughs> this one's sold, we one have one very just like it. Is. So this is the master bedroom. And then we're gonna walk in, go back down into, this is the um, guest bathroom. So this one has two full bathrooms. So when you go into this Davidson floor plan, what I like about this is it's a very open floor plan. So um, you're looking now into the galley style kitchen. So all of our kitchens are gonna have new stainless steel appliances with granite. Um, you'll see in just a minute as we kind of pan, we also have a balcony. So all of our second and third floor apartments have a balcony. First floor apartments are all gonna have a patio. So this floor plan, if you wanna kind of get an idea. So it has a nice living room set up, a lot of windows. So if you like natural light, this is gonna show a lot of light um, into this apartment. And it really gives you a lot of space here to do a lot of things within this floor plan. Again, all new appliances, stainless steel, um, new granite countertops. This apartment has never been lived in. So the nice thing about Redbud is it's new construction. So we're gonna see the second bedroom. We've sort of set this second bedroom up as a guest room. Uh, you could use that as an office. So if someone wanted to use that secondary bedroom as an office or what I would call a flex room, you could easily do that. Um, this is sort of a nice day bed. So you could use this honestly as a bedroom and an office. Um, so it could work well for one person or two people and be quite comfortable. Any questions as we're paused, does anybody? About the square footage? Yeah, square footage for this Davidson is 1,217 square feet. So as I mentioned earlier from my, um, my very first uh, sentence or two that I mentioned to you is we have a wide range of apartments. This one falls right in the middle of sizes. So we have apartments that are in the 700 square foot range all the way up to 2,000 square feet. So this one is sort of right in that middle size, uh, smaller two bedroom. The next two that we're going to see are going to build a little bit larger. So we're going to see one next that's going to be a little bit larger than this one. And then the last one is going to be larger than that. Um, Stephen, we've had one question, um, okay. not specific to that floor plan, but just in general to talk about the laundry just a little bit. OK. OK, so the laundry, um, to not go into too much, but to specifically answer that question, every apartment and villa has their own washer and dryer provided by us. 
And so um, in the apartments, it's gonna be a stackable washer and dryer. However, included in your monthly fee, you get once a week housekeeping, which will also include flat linen laundry service. So your flat linens, your sheets and your towels will be laundered on a weekly basis if you choose by our um, in-house lawn or in-house housekeepers. Any other questions before we move along? Who has, I'm gonna try this, wave to me if you've been on site to the Heritage. <laughs> All right, so that's, looks like three and I'm not including Valerie in that wave. So, uh, so two of you have been on site to the Heritage. Um, so that's good. Uh, okay, so this next apartment that we're gonna see is a Franklin. So the Franklin is an inside corner apartment. Someone asked, I think earlier about getting the presentation. So we can email you this presentation. Uh, we can also email you a price list. Uh, so you've got that as well. But this is the Franklin that we're walking through. This is an inside corner. So you're gonna have, again, a lot of windows onto the courtyard. That's my favorite thing about this apartment is you have a nice interior courtyard view. And then you've got a nice space here for a dining area. Um, interestingly enough, some people that I've worked with that have liked this floor plan because it has a lot of wall space and they like to hang a lot of artwork or a lot of their own pictures. And so this apartment lends itself to a lot of places to hang your own artwork and really kind of personalize and decorate that. So again, this is a two bedroom, two bath. This apartment is 1,276 square feet. So just a little larger than the last one. This is the master bath. This master bath has a walk-in shower with a seat. Nice location on the courtyard. And then nice living space. And this is a first floor. This one is available. The first floor has a patio. Uh, the patios are nice, so you can walk out to the green space. This is the second bedroom, which we've set up as an office. So this work can work well as an office or a second bedroom. It does have a nice big walk-in closet. And then this is the second bathroom, which has a tub shower combo. Some people wanna know, do we have showers and bathtubs? And the answer is yes. Um, in our mid-size and larger apartments, you're gonna also have not only a walk-in shower in the floor plan, but you're gonna have a tub combo usually in there as well. Any questions about the Franklin? So again, this one is a two bedroom, two bath, has 1,276 square feet. Uh, we do have these available in our new Redbud building. All of the ceilings are nine feet tall. That's a question we get a lot as well. Um, so the ceilings are nice and high, even if you're on a first or second floor, you've got a nice clearance in the ceiling. Okay, lastly, uh, we're gonna see, this is a Jackson floor plan. So the Jackson is, um, don't, can you pause that for a second? Okay, so the Jackson is uh, 1300 square feet. So this one's 1300 square feet. This one has two bedrooms plus a den. So a lot of people wanna, wanna know, um, hey, we want two bedrooms, but we also wanna have a den space or an office space as well. So the Jackson is the smaller or is the smallest two bedroom plus a den apartment that we have. So this will kind of give you a nice look into that. Um, okay, sorry, Valerie, if you want to play that. That's okay, Stephen, someone asked about storage options. Okay, that's a great question. Storage, um, every apartment comes with a storage locker. And so uh, we don't have a video of what a storage locker would look like, but it's about three to about three and a half feet wide by five feet deep about nine feet tall and there's a shelf in there. So it does give you a place outside of your apartment to store seasonal items, luggage, boxes, um, golf clubs, if you will, things of that nature where you can put uh, some things in storage um, and keep it out of your apartment. So a good question. So this is again, the Jackson. Jackson Kitchen's a little bigger. So it does give you an area in the corner. It's kind of hard to see on this video that you could put a, an eat-in kitchen table if you wanted to in that apartment. Okay, so right here, you're looking at the den or the office. 
And then this space is the living room and the Jackson and larger apartments all have a fireplace as well. So in just a minute, when you, when you see the fireplace, you'll see, um, so the Jackson is gonna have a gas fireplace. Again, it's two bedroom, two bath. So this is the guest bath. Um, and through those doors to the left, that's where the stackable washer and dryer would be. And then this is the guest bedroom here. And there's a guest closet to the right. You may see in these apartments carpet and you may see hardwood. Um, residents can choose their flooring um, and you can make upgrades within certain criteria uh, on your own nickel is basically the way that I describe that. So if you want to make changes within your floor plan, you can do that um, after closing and we can kind of talk about that if you want to. Uh, when you come in for a visit. So this is the master bathroom and it kind of faded a little bit there, but the master bathroom in this apartment has a tub, a separate garden tub and a shower. So you have a, a walk-in shower and a tub. And you can see a little bit of that before the camera fades, uh, the tub being right there and then the shower just beyond that. So in all of our, just a little bit more, all of our apartments and villas have pull cords in the bedrooms and bathrooms. And so it does give you peace of mind um, if you have an, an emergency or you uh, need assistance. If you pull one of our cords, you're gonna have someone to come and assist you. And then there's also what I call a check-in button. So you have to check in every day with us just to let us know that you're okay for the day. So again, a lot of these things we cover when you come in for a visit. Um, any questions of myself or Judy or Valerie about the floor plans? Anyone wanna go back and look at anything in particular or have other questions, we're happy to answer that. Stephen, we did get a question about walk-in closets and do all three of the plans that we looked at have a walk-in closet? They do, yes. So one thing that I'm, I've been impressed with with our apartments are the size of the walk-in closets. Even our smaller one and one bedroom with den apartments do have a nice size walk-in closet. In fact, some people end up putting some of their chest of drawers or things like that in those closets because they are fairly large and it gives you more floor space within your bedroom itself. So um, yes, there are. Now my, I, I do realize that my uh, view of a walk-in closet and your view of a walk-in closet <laughs> might be different as my wife tells me often. Um, but for me, the walk-in closets, I think are very um, adequate size uh, for each apartment. So I think you would find that as well. With um, in particular the Franklin floor plan, um, and again we'll we'll be able to uh, pass on to you a, a two-dimensional uh, drawing of the Franklin floor plan. Both the um, belt bedrooms have a walk-in closet, and actually the second bedroom in the Franklin has a larger walk-in closet than the master bedroom. So uh, the Franklin floor plan probably has, um, in in my opinion, a, a an amazing um, use of space. Um, very smart. It's a smart design. Judy, while we have you, we did have a question about security here on campus. Okay. So um, right now the gatehouse is manned 24 seven. So we do have um, a staff person there. Uh, we do have security throughout the day 24 seven who are um, walking around. Um, they're doing double duty now because we are delivering all packaging uh, to each apartment and villa, so um, which actually is a pretty good thing because the, uh, the security department is um, really purposefully going to pretty much every single uh, apartment and villa every day. So yes, we do have 24 hours security. And we can, I think we also had a question about sending the videos. Uh, we can send these videos and um, mm -hmm. We have more videos that we can send you. And then our website also has uh, videos listed on our website as well. So if one thing we've gotten pretty good at is making videos for people mm -hmm. who are offsite. So um, you can also email us and ask for specific videos about a specific floor plan. And we can, we can FaceTime and do a FaceTime personal tour with you. Uh, so we can be pretty creative in how we're um, showing you these, these places. And if you're on our email list yesterday, I believe, Valerie, the um, email went out with Monty Brown and, and uh, Barb McCool. 
uh, Monty and Barb live here in the community and they wrote the book on active aging. And um, it's, a, I know uh, Susan Leathers, you, you did that video. It's, it's, it's a little long. It, it, I, I don't wanna say it's a little, it's, it's a longer vi video, but it is a wonderful video. And if you uh, did not receive that email blast, I think it went out yesterday. Uh, shoot us a message and we'll make sure we get that out to you. It's a couple who moved here during COVID and um, they were professors and actually taught um, administration, um, healthcare administration and actually wrote the book on active aging. And uh, uh, also when you do go to our website, there is a gallery of videos of resident testimonials, um, employee testimonials, and just a, a lot of good content. Judy, I'll tell you that as we're moving into the Q&A portion, we have about 10 minutes left. Everyone has, uh, for the most part, been unmuted. So feel free to, anyone can pipe up and ask a question verbally if you want to, or you are certainly welcome to use the chat window. Uh, yes, uh, Jan and Susie Callan here. Uh, we just started considering something like this, so we don't know a lot about them. Um, what I was wondering is, does uh, age make a difference in the entrance pay, payments and fees, sort of a sliding scale, the older you are, the higher the entrance fee? Good question. Um, Good question. Um, no, it's, it's the residents that you choose to move into um, so that particular resident would have residents would have a uh, an entrance payment assigned to it, and um, the style of a, a apartment or villa would have a um, a unique um, monthly fee. So age age doesn't matter, but you one of you has to be at least sixty two years or older. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing is we're as we're answering questions. One thing that we do with everyone that we work with um, is a financial analysis, if you will, because a big part of this, as you can imagine, is how does this fit financially for us, not only today, but 15 years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. So, so that's a part of what we do as well, is walk through a financial profile. Uh, we have some financial tools that we use uh, to give you the peace of mind and us the peace of mind that this is not only, um, you know, right for you now, but it's going to be right for you in the future. So, um, uh, you know, I know a lot of people that we talk with have, you know, obviously the financial part of this is, is important. And so that's one thing that we work with. We work with a lot of financial planners and attorneys and very interested kids and grandkids. And uh, sometimes they give us the, the most questions, which are, which is good. Um, and so uh, we, we're happy to do that in any way and engage in any way. So um, there's no bad question and no wrong question and um so that's just my advice for you is i get you know and we're coming up upon thanksgiving soon and so some of these conversations might start happening um now and maybe by the end of the year you'll be talking with family members and i know all of you are probably in a maybe a, a range of different conversations maybe you've talked with your loved ones or maybe you've not and maybe you're thinking about it these are always sometimes not the most easy conversations to have but I just encourage you to start those conversations and, and start talking about that if you have family members um, that are interested in this process with you. So that's another encouragement I would give you. Um, beside uh, financial, we also look at your health. Um, one of the criteria to move into the heritage is that you have to be capable of independent living when you do um, apply for um, residency. So how we determine that is we look at 11 activities of daily living. There is a confidential data application you would complete um, with that information to us. Uh, there's also a short memory assessment that we complete. And we also look at some pre-existing conditions. So two things, three things are very important. One, one of you has to be 62 years or older. Um, we have to just make sure it's a good financial fit for you. And, and for us as well, and also that you are still capable of independent living. Once you need personal care or are receiving personal care, um, you would not be able to move into the independent living portion of the heritage or benefit by the life care plan, which is that stabilization of the monthly fee. 
So just keep that in mind when thinking about your timeline to do this. Now I've been here 10 and a half years and I'm actually talking to someone now who I spoke to 10 and a half years ago and uh, they're still independent, which is great. And, and I think they're gonna move forward, um, but you have to keep that in mind when plotting out the timeline to do, um, to do a move like this, that financially, age-wise, and um, capable of independent living. Stephen, you want to address oh, that? Well, I was just, as I was thinking too, um, wave if you have a friend or someone that you know that lives here. And, okay. So I always tell people, if you know someone that lives here, you've got an insider perspective. Um, obviously with COVID, it's a little bit of a challenge to um, come on site and have a meal and do all of these things, but take advantage of, of as much as we offer with this or other uh, tools that we can give you by coming and visiting with us, um, maybe at Winfield, um, doing some of the virtual visits and tours and the videos that we offer. Um, when this world hopefully becomes a little less crazy, then we're gonna be able to do uh, more things and more normal things within uh, our prospect, if you will, group, so we can kind of engage you in a little bit better ways. But as we mentioned earlier, we, we've moved in people, people are moving to the community. So um, things are moving along. All of the activities that uh, Valerie mentioned that are happening, um, that's positive because <laughs> one of the main reasons why people move here is for the lifestyle and for um, the engagement with other people like-minded to them. And so uh, we're doing that, but we're also protecting our residents. Um, we're also doing that socially distancing. And, and um, so whereas we did a, a ladies tea time yesterday and we had multiple ladies tea time groups that came through because we mm -hmm. made the numbers smaller and um, just increased um, kind of that footprint a little bit. So, so we're, we're having to kind of think on our toes a little bit uh, to meet the residents needs, but we're, uh, we're doing that and, and actively engaging in that. So um, yeah. those are some of my thoughts on that. Thank you, Stephen. It looks like we're getting close to um, three o'clock. So um, as we leave, we would like to just uh, thank you for attending and we are going to play a short video. You can um, just close your browser after the video is over. We're gonna close the browser. I wanna thank you again for joining us today here at the Heritage at Brent Woods virtual visit. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.